Hello, welcome to another video by AK Trapper. I'm here to, I want to just share a little bit about uh, stoves. Um, stoves I've made, stoves I've found, just survival stoves in general. Alaska has a long history of, you know, extreme cold climate and um, the pioneers and the old timers were pretty creative in the way they made stoves. And uh, a lot of that uh, technology, or <laughs> I want to call it, it's almost like an art, has been lost uh, today's, to today's people. I believe the days are coming as we see uh, uh, our own country unraveling and, and the world in general where we might have to get back to some of the old ways just to survive. So come along with me. I want to show you some stoves and, and I'll show you what I've learned about them over the years. Here we have probably one of the oldest examples I can find. This stove was made from two Blazo cans. It was probably made a uh, hundred years ago. I know the history of the area it was found in. I found it when I was 14 years old. That was like uh, 50 years ago. And you can see that um, he took two Blazo cans, put them together. He actually made some uh, rivets. I don't know what he uh, used for rivets, probably nails. That was generally what they used. He's got some rivets here on the latch. Um, he actually made a, a, a hinge for the door just uh, by cutting the tin. And this, is, this was also off the Blazo can. Right there is where the, the spout was. He used the handle of the Blazo can to make his latch for the door. And uh, right there is where it would latch into to, to, to shut the door. Um, just goes to show that it doesn't have to be real fancy to produce heat. Um, he actually heated an old uh, log cabin with this. And uh, right there is where his, his stove pipe came out. And he probably used uh, cans or some more blazo material to make his stove pipe and riveted that together as well. But they used what they, what they could find. <clears throat> um, my earliest experience actually seeing a wood stove made was with my father. We were out hunting one time and uh, scattered throughout Alaska are these old uh, 55 gallon uh, military drums. Uh, the military everywhere they went they left behind these 55 gallon barrels and a lot of them can still be found. A lot of them are still good. Anyways my father made a, a wood stove by cutting a 55 gallon barrel in half and then um, he did a couple of interesting things to make the stove. And I'll, I'll give you a demonstration of what he did here. Let me put this camera up. Sorry for the wiggling and the jiggling. Right there. All we had uh, was a hammer and an axe. He did have some stove pipe that he'd hauled in. He'd been eyeballing those uh, barrels for a few years, I guess. And he just took, uh, put his stovepipe down. You can use charcoal or whatever you have for a marker. He drew a pattern for the, for the, where he was going to cut out for the stovepipe. Then he drew another pattern and he uh, actually just put a, a hole in that he could cover with his frying pan. Cut two holes. I would probably do that a little closer to the bung, or maybe take the bung out and, and uh, cut two holes. Basically, use the uh, this hole to feed the wood in, and of course this this hole for the the stovepipe to come out. And then he took the barrel and he, he wiggled it back and forth and dug it into the gravel, covered it back with gravel. He left one little place for air to get in. He dug a little hole underneath the edge of the barrel. Then he put a rock there. When he wanted to close the draft, he just put a rock there, shut her down, hold fire all night. We used a half of a 55 gallon barrel and it kept that wall tent nice and warm all hunting season. And I was impressed. Uh, I never, never forgot that uh, little invention of his. So, uh, one of my favorite, my personal favorites, is a one third uh, 55 gallon drum. And uh, I use a little fancier tools to make it, but it's still one third of a barrel. 
I take and cut the top off and, and I cut the barrel right on the seam and the top will fit right in there and then I just peen it in with a ball peen hammer all the way around. Cut a hole for the for the stovepipe and uh, weld a couple little hinges. You could use rivets once again if that's all you had but you don't want to use aluminum rivets you'd have to use steel rivets. But I tack weld these hinges on and cut a piece of uh, the same barrel steel for the door it makes a nice big bar makes a nice big door, but it has to be able to overlap the whole door. And I like to make these a little flatter than the curvature of the drum, so that when you close them, it kind of wraps tight around there. And then for a draft, um, a bolt with a spring and more 55-gallon barrel steel and a nice little hole. The nice thing about this is if uh, if your spring does get overheated and gets weak, it will fall down. Um, and shut off the fire so no danger of um, overburning and now I'll just give you a little view here I did weld some uh, I made a little aluminum legs here you can see where the the seam is for where the top of the drum has actually just fit right in that where I cut it and then peened over seals up nice and airtight and uh, I make these uh, drum stoves takes me an hour and a half two hours to make one and then I, I cache them in places where I go. They'll always be there. And I'll make sure that I cache them. Nobody's going to stumble on them. With my Quick and easy. Then we have a couple more examples here of uh, some homemade wood stoves and some store bought wood stoves. This, this one is called uh, an airtight heater. And they were kind of nice, they're lightweight. Now you have a little screw that for the draft and then a little uh, door for the lid. Actually heated a cabin with a little bigger version of one of these. One winter, I was living without electricity in a wood stove and used an airtight stove to heat it all winter. Uh, but these things will burn out. About a season's use is all you're going to get. And this next one right beside it there, that was all made out of harvested uh, 55 gallon barrel steel and uh, uh, same design same kind of flap this spring is kind of weak but it'll still hold um, but that's your draft your intake a little uh, latch door and I had to flatten all the steel out and then uh, make it uh, this is double folded all the seams are double folded and I uh, actually made the legs so that they they fold up underneath too so this thing will come into a really nice little package actually ready to transport just like that then over here next to it we have a five gallon a five gallon uh, drum I think it was a paint drum originally not uh, and same kind of de design I put a little uh, little draft down here at the bottom the lid is uh, not hinged or anything you put your wood wood in here and then uh, um, the stove pipe goes right in there. Real simple, but yet uh, it'll give you a nice hot tent and uh, give you the opportunity to dry out if you're in a um, if you're in a wet condition. These two down here are commercially made stoves. Um, Alaska Tent and Tarp sells uh, uh, more than just tents; they sell wood stoves as well. And uh, uh, these are nice. They have a uh, collapsible legs, and uh, there's your draft. Use a little latch. Very simple design. And that's what you want. Something simple, but something that's going to last. Here's a little smaller version, uh, made by uh, Kinaiko, made in the USA. And here I have a book. I'd like to recommend if you ever want to get into making wood stoves, you can you can find this book online. Um, digital uh, I believe I have a copy of it but um, it's all about uh, making stoves out of 55 gallon barrels using the steel harvesting the steel and so it's uh, by Ole Wick um, you should still be able to find this on Amazon or uh, one of those places and you can get some pretty clever ideas from uh, Ole Wick and then down here I have some tools 
that I use for making stoves. Um, over here are some modern versions. I'll start with the modern ones first. Uh, this I believe is called a pneumatic tailpipe cutter. And uh, this works really good for cutting barrel stoves or barrel steel. And uh, one of the best tools I've found for um, actually for cutting uh, large quantities of steel. Um, not very thick stuff, just stovepipe uh, diameter steel. This is a nibbler, kind of nice to get in. You can do really tight corners with it. It's a little air nibbler made by Ingersoll Ran. And then, of course, uh, you have your uh, aircraft type uh, um, shears, metal shears, nippers, whatever you want to call them. These are made by Wise. Uh, these work very, very good. You got a left hand and a right hand and a straight. You can do a lot of fabrication work with these. Uh, when my dad made uh, that uh, wood stove out of a half of a drum that time, he used an axe and a chisel. And he did all of his barrel cutting with, with these tools right here. Ole Wick in his book there, he uh, recommends that you take a piece of snow machine spring or some kind of automobile spring and just make a little sharp edge like that and you can use that for for uh, cutting your openings and, and cutting your uh, your steel um, takes a little more time and it's probably not as uh, uh, delicate and as accurate but you get good with these after a season so uh, I believe that's all I had here one more stove I want to show you real quick um, this one here I made out of uh, a piece of uh, broom tubing that I found years ago. I don't know how good the light is in here, but um, this is my sauna. My sauna stove. I heat up these lava rocks with it. Uh, just once again, a hinge and a draft. That's all you need. This was a piece of exhaust tubing welded on here. So. You know, in a, when you have time, and if, uh, you know, if necessity dictates, you can get pretty creative making a wood stove. It doesn't have to be fancy. You might need to keep an eye on it at first, learn how it operates so you don't burn your place out. But um, um, in Alaska climates, they can save your life. example of a homemade wood stove. All the steel on this stove was made out of harvested 55 gallon drum steel. You can see the seam here. I didn't do the, the nicest job flattening it off and everything but it works. The firebox and draft is right here. And then from the draft, the, um, the draft can go two different routes. One is, one is it'll go underneath the oven here. A little, little oven. And I put a dampener in here. If the dampener is straight up, it closes off the exhaust flow so the exhaust can't flow right up the chimney. What has to happen then is the exhaust will flow underneath here, around the, the oven box, and then up, then up the chimney. And that allows the oven to get nice and warm just from the exhaust gases. And uh, this is all made from harvested, harvested uh, 55 gallon drum steel four hinges and two latches one draft and works really good for heating this little cabin foldable legs so it's very transportable but if you like to make bread well you have that option with this with this homemade stove now, I don't know if I mentioned it or not so I'll, I'll mention it now that stove that my father made out of half of a uh, 55 gallon drum that time, it did not have a bottom. It was, it was open on the bottom. Uh, all he did was when he cut it, he uh, uh, just wiggled it and, and uh, went around the edges and beat it into the dirt so that it would seal there. And so the, the earth actually became the bottom of the stove. 
and uh, that stove generated good heat like I said it would burn all night and with a frying pan that just fit the uh, covered the covered the opening we could cook our food on it as well and uh, we just left the frying pan on there until we wanted to put some firewood in uh, and that was our lid it was uh, not hinged or anything like that it just covered the hole so air couldn't get into the into the fire all right well hope you enjoyed uh, if you're interested in doing this once again I'll recommend this wood stoves how to make and use them by Ole Wick um, and that's about all I had for today. All right, God bless. See you on the next one.